Hello statistics students, this is Jamie Amy and this video is our discussion on chapter 12. Title is ANOVA, A-N-O-V-A, and that stands for Analysis of Variance. Section 12.1 is on one-way ANOVA tests. What an ANOVA test is, a one-way ANOVA test, is a test that three or more populations means are equal. So when you think of ANOVA, think this is the test about comparing the different means of the populations. So when you set up your null hypothesis, capital H sub naught, you guys are used to that. We have mu sub 1 equal to mu sub 2 equal to mu sub 3. Now if you have more than three populations, then you can just tack on it equals to mu sub 4 equals mu sub 5 for however many populations you have. The null hypothesis is saying that their means are equal. And the alternative hypothesis is saying that at least one of the population's means are diff is different from the others. Okay, so when you go through the thought process, you'll start by comparing the sample means. And if your sample means are close together, that leads you to a small uh, F test statistic which leads to a large p-value, which you can see on the graph here. And if that is the case, then we are going to fail to reject equality of the population means. Okay, the other case will be if you start by comparing your sample means and you find that at least one sample mean is very different from the others, that leads us to a large f test statistic which leads us to a small p-value, which you can see in the graph there. And that would lead us to conclude um, rejecting equality of the population means. Okay, I added a little summary here. It takes you from the start of the thought process to the end, and it goes like this. If your p is low, then you will conclude the populations have different means. If p is high, we will conclude that the different populations have the same means. Okay, here let's uh, practice through this example. Use the performance IQ data at alpha equals 0 0.05. Do the three samples come from populations with the same mean? All right, let's take a look at what we have here. We have a group of IQ scores. Um, looks like they're from children. And this first group here has low blood lead levels. So maybe low levels of blood, low levels of lead in their blood. Here we have um, our second population, the group of IQ scores from children that have medium blood lead levels. And our third population is here. It's a group of IQ scores from children that have high blood lead levels. Okay, so what we are being asked to do is compare the means of these three populations. And to do that, we run a test um, called ANOVA. Okay, to start running our test, we enter the three populations data into L1, L2, and L3. Okay, so we're gonna enter this top group all into uh, list one, second group all into list two, and the third group all into list three. Now, if you are using StatCrunch or Excel, this is really gonna save you a lot of time. Um, you can copy and paste this um, set of data into uh, StatCrunch or into Excel. Uh, but if you're using the TI a gra or a graphing calculator like myself, I actually have to enter these into list one, list two, and list three. Um, but that's okay. Uh, this is the technology that I'm comfortable with, and so I want to um, use it to display how to do this question. All right, so graphing calculators out. Everybody hit stat. Everybody hit edit. And we're going to start typing this set of data into L1, followed by this one into L2, followed by this one into L3. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video until you are done typing the data into L1, L2, and L3, 
and then restart and we will catch up um, regroup. Okay, welcome back. You should have your data into list one, list two, and list three. You set up your null hypothesis saying that the means are equal. Alternative hypothesis saying that the, at least one of the means is different. And we are going to run the test of ANOVA now. Okay, everybody together, hit stat, arrow over to tests. If you arrow up, you'll get there the fastest. It's op option H. The program is called ANOVA, and then you see the open parentheses. Or you could also arrow down. Okay, so open that program called ANOVA. All right, you need to make your input screen look like this. So the ANOVA is already there for you. The open parentheses is already there for you. We need to add the L1, comma, L2, comma, L3. So we, and then close parentheses. We need to add this part here. Okay, everybody hit second and hit the number one. And you can see the L1 on your screen now. Now we all need to put a comma. The comma is right above the seven, so hit comma. Now we need L2, so hit second and the number two. You should see the L2 on your screen now. Comma again, it's above the seven. And now we need L3, so everybody hit second and the number three. Okay, close parentheses, and when we hit enter, it's going to run the test of ANOVA on whatever data we put in L1, L2, and L3. So enter. Okay, here's a little snapshot of what you guys um, should see on your output screen. If you see something a little different, you might have just typed in one data value wrong. Uh, if you're using StatCrunch or Excel, you should see this a similar uh, list of these outputs here. So F equals, that's our test statistic. P equals, that's our P value. Degrees of freedom, two. And that, you can also arrow down to see more on that output screen, but that's all we're going to use. So we're going to write down our test statistic, F equals. We have our p-value, which we always compare to the significance level. By compare, I mean fill in that little square that I just drew, and it turns out that p is lower than the significance level, which makes sense, because 0.0195 is smaller than our significance level of 0.05. So p is low. And here's that little rhyme. If P is low, the null must go. And if you look at the summary on the last slide, that means we are going to say that the pop at least one of the population means is different than the others. So different means. And a conclusion would be there is evidence uh, that the three samples come from populations with different means. Okay, this next snapshot right here, it was given to us, but you may be asked to calculate these values on your own, so I want you to know how to do those. Okay, this first set right here comes all from that first population, the low blood lead levels. The 78 is because we had lowercase n equals 78 data values. The x bar of 102.7 you can find that right now by running one variable stats on your um, graphing calculator or stat crunch. I'll walk you through it, okay? Hit, uh, so pick your calculator back up. Okay, hit stat, arrow over one time to calculate. And the first program there, it's the first one we learned in this class called one bar stats, open it. And if you run it off of list one, so second and the number one, frequency list you can leave blank and then go ahead and calculate. You see that it has X bar as 102.7 and you'll see X, uh, sorry, lowercase s sub X, sample standard deviation of 16.8 right there. Okay, this 
set of statistics comes from our population 2 and lowercase n equals 22 because we had 22 data values. And if we run one variable stats off of L2, you'll see x bar equals 94.1 and s sub x equals 15.5. Remember, this is the sample mean, and this is the sample standard deviation, x bar and lowercase s. Okay, maybe I'd put a little sub 2 for the, because we add all that stuff in second uh, in L2, whereas these ones would be sub 1. Okay, third population. We had 21 data values, so lowercase n equals 21. And if you go ahead and run one var stats off of L3, you'll find that your X bar, or the average IQ score, was 94.2. And the standard deviation from that sample is 11.4. Okay, so you are able to calculate all the individual statistics of each population by running one variable stats, and the test of ANOVA will compare the sample means for you. So it appears that the greater blood lead levels are associated with lower IQ scores. So um, that's a whole nother topic for the chemists and doctors to discuss, but as the statisticians, uh, based on the data that we have, that would be our um, result. All right, and that will conclude our lesson on section 12.1. Thank you for joining me.